some people say the problem with being vegan is you can't eat a bloody thing. I mean, by the time you've stopped eating meat, fish, milk, eggs and cheese, there ain't nothing left except a few poxy vegetables. You're obviously a bit of a liability on the eating out front as well. So you have to stay in by yourself cooking lentils the whole time. Some restaurants may knock up an omelette or something if a straight vegetarian walks in. But they haven't got time to go cooking a load of chickpeas because you think you're a vegan. Buying vegan food is as easy as buying bits of meat. Nowadays, in most of supermarkets, you'll find vegan treats. Aki, chapati, dumpling and naan, chana and rotis, onion, utter pan, masala, dosa, green colour, loo, bell and samosa, corn and aloo, yam and cassava, pepper pot stew, rotul and guava, rice and tofu, puree, parata, tasmi, casserole, brown eggless pasta and brown bread rolls. Soya milk muesli, soya bean curd, soya sweet sweeties, soya's the word, soya bean margarine, soya bean sauce, what can make medicine? Soya, of course. Soya mix yogurt. Soya ice cream. All soya sorbet. Soya rhyme supreme. Soya sticks, licorice, soya salad. Try this, soya this, soya is bad. Plantain and tabbouleh, cumin, pudding, onion, barge with plenty cumin. Breadfruit and coconut, molasses tea, dairy free omelets, very chilly. Gingerbread, nut roll, sorrow for four. Cocoa or rye bread, I take them on tour. Drinking cool morbi makes me feel sweet. What was the question now? What do we eat? As well as not eating animals, vegans don't wear them either. Vegan shoes, as my mum calls them, come in all shapes and sizes, from the hard-wearing to the highly stylish. Now, there are some vegetarians who justify wearing leather by saying it's only a byproduct of the meat industry and that they're not actually contributing to the animal's death. Come on now. If the meat industry couldn't sell the skins for leather, they'd probably go bust. Killing the animal simply for meat would be unprofitable. And profits is what it's all about. Of course, just because vegans can now pretend they are wearing leather doesn't mean you gotta like this sort of stuff. But I love it. Cow's milk is promoted as a health-giving wonder food. But when you stop and think about it, it's actually a pretty weird idea to drink the baby food from another species. Plenty of animals regularly kill and eat each other, but we are the only animals to take the breast milk from another species, and the only animals to drink milk after infancy. This must spinach contains more calcium than this pointer. And half a million Brits can't digest cow's milk anyway. Instead of cow's milk, vegans drink soya milk, which can be bought at almost all supermarkets and health food stores, and which can be used for cooking in exactly the same way. It contains half the calories and fat, and is only slightly more expensive because taxpayers subsidise cow's milk. 
There is a common misconception that being vegan is some kind of sacrifice that people make because they love animals so much. However, the animal that will benefit most from you becoming vegan is yourself. If you look at any diet plan or health warning, the message is always the same. Eat less meat, dairy products and animal fats and eat more fresh fruit and vegetables. The author might as well just write, go vegan and save themselves a bother. Gotta catch up with Lucy Stevens, my mate, vegan, British triathlon team. Hello, Lucy. Hi, Benjamin. Ah, so what do you have to do to be in a triathlon then? Well, I swim 1,500 metres, then cycle 40 kilometres and run 10 kilometres one after the other. Oh, sounds hectic. Yeah, it's probably the most grueling sport that there is. How long have you been a vegan? Uh, I've been a vegan for about 10 years and a vegetarian for seven years before that. So you can be a top-class top class athlete and be a vegan at the same time? Oh, definitely. I think being a vegan has probably helped me, actually, because I get all the protein and all the carbohydrates I need, but I don't get any of the saturated fats that you get in a vegetarian or a meat diet. Lucy! Lucy, come back! I am serving for England. My mate Mickey Tecker said, loads of people would love to be vegans, but simply can't afford to be. I mean, by the time you bought your week's supply of veg and soya milk and bread and stuff, well, you'd be lucky to get change from a fiver, and a fiver could buy you a great big steak. And there's this recession thing. I mean, look at me. I'm a poor bloke from Mayfair. I'm unemployed, times are hard, and I'm saving up all my money because I want to be a student when I grow up, he said. And besides, he said, I haven't got the time. This is the 90s. It's do it quick time. Grab and run. I can't be soaking beans and pulses for four hours a day. It'd be non-stop cooking. There'd be no time for credit card fraud and joyriding and ram riding and sex. Milk is fab. It's wet, it's creamy, 
It smells yummy when it's been left in the fridge too long and it comes in bottles that do cute jiggly dancing in their adverts. Apart from the adverse health effects for humans drinking the stuff, the only problem with this super liquid is that for every 7,000 litres or so that you produce, you get a free cough. Milk is only produced by humans or animals after they have given birth as it is the food for the newborn baby. The calf must be disposed of quickly before it starts scuffing all our milk. What happens to it depends on its sex, and for once, the girls get arguably the better deal. Males are no good at producing milk, but they are damn good at making meat. A couple of days after being born, most of them will go off to join a beef herd and get fattened up ready to join their mates in the supermarket freezer. An animal-loving nation like ours wouldn't dream of allowing anything as barbaric as veal to be produced in this country. So any British calves wanting to spend six months in a cage, not being able to turn round and consuming only liquids, have to be exported for the pleasure. We can't have our calves back until they are tender white flesh, ready to be consumed with a delicate tomato and basil sauce and perhaps a bottle of fine white wine. Females are much luckier than males. Oh, yes, some will admittedly go on to become meat like their brothers, but others will join the dairy herd. Although they don't get to have sex, artificial insemination puts them in the family way and they have a little baby about once a year. This means they'll still be making milk for the last calf and so end up pregnant and giving milk for up to eight months a year. To get the most milk out of the least number of cows, you need to make their udders as big as possible. This is done using hormones and selective breeding. And although it means it's a bit tricky to walk and that almost all cows suffer from lameness at some point in their lives, their udders can now weigh up to 50 kilograms. Dairy cows are killed at about seven of their expected 20 years as it becomes more profitable to bring in some youngsters to take their places. Although drinking milk does not directly cause any death in the obvious way that eating a piece of meat does, it is the indirect cause of death for millions of unwanted calves and dairy cows every year. It is for these reasons that vegans do not drink milk. Eggs are equally excellent. You can fry them and poach them and boil them and make fluffy cakes with them. How else can you increase your cholesterol level by up to 12% for as little as 15p? Most vegetarians find it acceptable to eat eggs because they feel that nobody has actually died for their omelette. But to make eggs, you've got to make female chickens. And for every female you make, the law of averages says you'll also make a male. Unfortunately, male chicks are unable to perform the one function that can make cash for humans, that is, laying eggs, which means that they are nothing more than a waste of space, and almost one million of these surplus chicks are gassed in Britain every week. Buying free-range eggs is undoubtedly a pretty nifty way of alleviating any slight blemishes on an otherwise spotless conscience. But are these male chicks really going to care how much legroom their sisters will get? As 80% of all British eggs are produced in battery units, anyone buying ready-made food containing eggs or eating eggs out at restaurants can rest assured of the small but important contribution they are making to upholding these fine institutions. It is for these reasons that vegans do not eat eggs. It is estimated that 260 million acres of rainforest have been cleared in America alone to grow crops to feed livestock. That's about 55 square feet for every one of those. The destruction of the rainforest is not just bad news for both human and the animal inhabitants of the forest, but also for every living thing on the planet that needs oxygen to breathe.
Now, where was I? Oh, shit. 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 That's another problem with all these cows. Busy making your burgers, your steak, your milk, your low-fat raspberry ripple ice cream. Each cow produces up to 50 litres of the brown smelly stuff every day. And then there's the calves and the pigs and the turkeys and the chickens and all the chickens' mates. Altogether, they produce 200 million tonnes every year. And this is one of the major causes of water pollution in the UK. There are now loads of vegetarians milling about. And an estimated 2,000 more Britons give up meat every week, which is brilliant and which is undoubtedly saving the lives of millions of animals. Becoming a vegetarian is a very positive thing to do, but there is a certain amount of hypocrisy in, on one hand, refusing to buy meat and animal fats, but on the other hand, supporting the very same industries by buying milk or eggs or liver. Our power as consumers cannot be underestimated. We effectively dictate exactly what goods are produced, and if the demand for animal products start to disappear, then the industries will have no choice but to start producing more ethically sound items or go bust. Really, when you think about it, becoming a vegan is the ultimate consumer boycott. There's no doubt that becoming a vegan is not an easy option. You'll be the butt of all those amusing lettuce and rabbit jokes, you'll have to visit health food shops, and your friends and parents will try and slip bits of meat into your food. Not only that, but animals do taste nice, apparently. So, in the perfect world, everyone would be vegan. There'd be no global warming, the ozone layer would have got patched up, and nobody over the age of 30 would be allowed into raves. But so what? We've heard it all before. Nice film, Ben, and all that. But what do you want me to do about it? Let's face it, it's not exactly cool to be a vegan. I mean, would you be a vegan? Yes! <laughs> I'm a vegan because, uh, firstly, I didn't really like the thought of eating animals anymore. And secondly, I'm asthmatic and uh, cutting out dairy products I find just really helped with my uh, health. At first they think you're mad when you say you don't eat meat, but now it's like worldwide that people don't eat meat or dairy products. So definitely I will always be a vegan. Hi, I'm Katie Lang and this is Lulu. Meat stinks, and not just for the animals, but for human health and the environment. I always wanted to stop wearing leather and you always go, it's so difficult, what about my boots, what about my jacket? And I am now leather free and very proud of it. We want to avoid this and this human riot. Why don't we start by changing our diet? I started becoming aware of animal rights, I guess when I first became a vegetarian, a friend of mine was a vegetarian and, and I said, I asked her, I said, well, why are you a vegetarian? And she just said, well, you know, I, it's just like if I just started, I just ate my friend's dog or something, you know, and it just, just clicked with me. Raised rabbits to eat, and, I, and you're supposed to kill them when they're six weeks old, and when I looked at them, you know, they were so cute, I decided if I can't kill something myself, I'm not gonna eat meat anymore. Hello, I'm River Phoenix. It's up to us to take care of all our friends. I'm vegan because I feel it's completely unnecessary to uh, consume animals. If you and I, you or I, or anyone else, humans that, were, that are in this room or wherever, were turned into an animal, <laughs> you'd have trouble expressing that, if you couldn't speak in human terms, you'd have trouble expressing the fact that you want to get the hell out of there. You do exactly what they do. Try to jump over the fence, try to get away from the man who's clubbing you. Being vegan is the only way to go if you are an ethical vegetarian. Here she is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Spice, who is not only a professional wrestler and a bodybuilder, uh, but also uh, an actress. Yeah, Spice? Hi, this is Casey Kasem in Los Angeles, a vegetarian for over 20 years, a vegan for over a half a dozen years. Become a vegetarian, and your body will respect you for your wisdom. The animals will love you for your compassion. Hi, I'm Moby. I've been a vegan for about six years. The reason I became a vegan is because I love animals, and basically I think it's wrong for human beings to impose their will violently on other creatures.
Hi, I'm Yuri Geller. These are my children. This is Natalie and this is Daniel. And they're both vegans. Um, they were, uh, they're vegan since uh, day number one. I'm sending you my powers. You're going to become a vegan from now.